Okay, I'm going to do a little study here on wish. You say, well, why is such a word? I don't remember who. Someone told me one time, as a Christian, we ought not to wish. And part of my ministry is to witness to the lost people, to grow Christians up in the Lord, in the Bible, and to kick down what Christians should not do or believe or anything. To come up with the truth. So I've been thinking about that. You know, I don't remember who said it, but you know, a Christian ought not to wish. Now, wish appears six times in the Bible. So it's a Bible word. Wished, past, past tense, two times. Wishing, once. Five times verses for the Old Testament and four verses in the New Testament. But I say, I don't know who told me this, but let's take our Bibles to Job chapter 30, 31, excuse me, Job 31, verse 29. We'll see what the Bible says. Maybe this is not an interesting subject, but, you know, when you wish upon a star, you're not supposed to wish on stars. You're supposed to pray to God. The proper conduct and the proper text of the word study. In the Bible, the word of God, so you, you won't be ashamed, is do I wish or do I pray? What's the difference? We ought to pray, but Job 31, 29, if I rejoice at the destruction of him that hate me or hated me, or lift up myself when evil found him, yes, somebody doesn't like you. Either have I suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to him or his soul. Excuse me. I mark my Bible so much I can't read the words. So, wishing here is the first time the word wish in the root word shows up. It's wishing the first time, the only time for wishing. And he says, I have not sinned. By wishing destruction or threat or death or anything against the person that don't like you, that hates you. So the proper one here is I don't wish upon my enemies evil tidings. That's a good one. We all should follow that. So Psalms chapter 40 verse 14. Psalm 40, 14. I said, hopefully, you know, the Lord had me to do this for a reason. Maybe somebody will like it. Maybe somebody has the same aspects as me. I can't be the only person in the world. But Psalm 40, verse 14. Let them be ashamed and confounded. Together that seek after my soul to destroy it, Here's an enemy again. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish e wish me evil. All right, this is a counter to what Job. Job says, I got an enemy. I got someone who hates me and I don't wish any harm upon him. Now, the writer of the Psalms here, David, says, you know, let them be ashamed. Let them be confounded because they want to destroy me and they wish evil upon me. So here are enemies of the children of God wishing, wanting something to be done, to be passed the judgment, the fire to come down upon that man. So already we see a biblical definition of which is to want. And here is the first time the word wish, wish itself as the root word, shows up in the Bible. And the context is wish and evil by the enemy of, enemy of children of God. The wishing that we saw in Job is the first time the word shows up and the only time for wishing it is 
I am not going to wish upon my enemy destruction. And here the destru destruction is wanted upon those that do right by those that don't do right. Psalm 73.7 Psalm 73, 7. Their eyes stand out with fatness and have more than heart could wish. Now these are foolish people, verse 3. And the writer writes in Psalm 73, he has a little envy here. Oh, the people that are wicked, the people that are against God. Oh, how well do they prosper. And we see here that they have more than they, their heart to all the desires of their heart the wicked people get and have. Their wants, their desires, all oh, their heart, they get it. And if you were to study the rest of the chapter 73, when he goes in the sanctuary of the Lord and learns what goes on, he realizes the envy is foolish and the wicked men will... will face God at the great white throne judgment and will not be made safe will be cast off in the lake of fire so everything he has will be gone and everything done for God in Christ shall last and the wish here again is a, is a biblical definition of the word wish is to want to desire quite interesting Jonah 4 a oh Jonah Jonah 4.8. Man, he got swallowed by a whale, a big fish, and died and went to hell. I have to say that. Jonah 4.8. And it came to pass when the sun did rise that God prepared a vigilant east wind. And the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted each stroke. And wished, that's the first time that word shows up, wished, wished himself, what did he want? What was his desire? To die. He wanted to die. You ever say that in your life? Oh, I wish I could die. That comes out of the Bible. You're quoting from the Bible, I bet you didn't even know that. Jonah wants to die. He's been tormented. He's been displeased. He's in agony. He's been sunstroked. His idea of the Ninevites to be destroyed by the wrath of God, of a loving God, of a patient God, of a good God. He's sitting there waiting for the destruction and it doesn't happen. And God puts a threat and God puts troubles and problems in his way. Oh, I wish I could die. So Job says, I don't wish evil upon them that hate me. Psalms, them that hate me, they wish evil upon me. The wicked people's heart desire is what they get. Jonah, oh man, I wish I could die. Because I'm being I'm being treated by God in judgment. I'm being, you know, I hurt. I'm in pain. I'm suffering. Wish I could die. Now we move to Acts 27. We move all the way to the New Testament now. Now we don't have many to do. Acts 27, 29. This is Luke right in this one. Luke 27, 29. There's been a big storm it's been dark in the middle of the night there is man they're throwing the stuff overboard the, the marine the mariners are trying to get out of the ship it's just chaos and in the storm the ship is getting broken up then fearing least we should have fallen upon rocks that's not good for a ship they cast four anchors out of the stern the back of the ship and wished for day What's that? They want some light. 
the storm. It's the middle of the night. There, I mean, the moon has been darkened. The stars are not shining. There is no lighthouses. There is no electric lighting. It's candles and kerosene and, and oil. That's not giving much light. And he's like, oh, we can just have some light and get some relief from this storm. And that's Luke, the writer of the Gospel of Luke, and the writer of the book of Acts, who's also traveling with Paul in the shipwreck. He has a wish. Is it wrong to wish for a Christian? No, he just, Luke is in tragedy. Job was in tragedy. Jonah, his own tragedy. David was surrounded by his enemy. Maybe sometimes in our difficult and not so comfort life, maybe we do fall into wishing instead of prayer. But it says, then fear and least we, we, that includes, that includes Luke. Oh, we wish we were dead. Romans 9, 3. This is Paul. Now, I'm not one of them Paul only in them. I go through all 66 books of the Bible. But, and Paul would disagree. We can look at the greater Christians outside Jesus Christ. You would look at Paul. Paul would disagree. But for the church age and the church doctrines and the ways of the church today, we would look at the books that Paul wrote to the churches under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, not just who Paul was. Paul says in 9.3, For I could wish that myself were a curse for Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Paul has such a love for the Jewish people, the Israelites, the Hebrews, and he does not want them to go to hell. He wants them to be right with God, and Paul says, Despite that we've seen in Job, I am not going to wish myself anger and aggravation on my enemies. The enemies wish I would have aggravation and troubles and problems. Jonah wished to die. Luke wished to, oh, it would just be like daylight. Paul said, oh, whatever I could do for the Jews to be saved. If I could be accursed for my people to be saved, I wish that would happen. Are we going to realms of sin here with Paul wishing? There's been plenty, probably plenty of times since 1987 that I probably said to the Lord and said to myself, I wish my dad get saved. I pray. You cannot say, oh, you don't pray about it, you wish about it. both. I desire to speak to God about the salvation of my father. And yet, oh, I wish, I want, I desire that God would reach down to that heart and break that heart for him to call upon Jesus Christ to be saved. I would not use the word wish instead of prayer. So thus, we got to put that line between wishing and and praying. And there is a line there. There's a line there. Second Corinthians 13 9. Paul again. Paul again. Second Corinthians 13 9. For we are glad when we are weak. Ye are strong. And this also we wish, we wish, not only Paul, those with Paul, even your perfection. We were glad when you were weak, you are strong. And this also what we wish. We wish you were weak. Now, is that not a contradiction of Job? No, it's not. Paul is not wishing harm and destruction to the Christian, and yet when we are weak, 
we grow and learn and put more reliance and faith in God. We talk about being on the mountaintop. In the mountaintop, you don't learn very much. On mountaintops, it's snowy, it's cold, there's no vegetation. But in a valley, there could be a river. There could be plants. And tr times and trials may be a blessing for our walk with Jesus Christ and God. And that's Paul's wish here. Not harm. I mean, listen, Paul would not want any harm to any Christian, but if it'll help you to grow. I had prayed for people's souls, and I had prayed to the Lord, and I honestly, sincerely mean it. Lord God, whatever it takes to bring them down, take them down. If they will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to say, I ain't doing this to be mean, I ain't doing it to be destructive, but I desire more the salvation of lost souls o over the comforts of the world and to die lost. And if you are truly saved and you truly have the heart for loved ones in your life, you have at one time prayed to the Lord God whatever it takes, or you should pray that prayer. I've seen it happen. I've seen it work. I refuse for salvation, but I've seen God be faithful. Look at the points and times in your life where you've grown to more. Is it up on the hill, up on the mountain, or is it in the valley? One last place. Third John 1 2. Third John 1 2, or just 2. This is John. This is the Apostle John that leaned against the breast of Jesus. Third John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Compare what Paul wrote. And yet, I wish you will be in good health. I wish, you know, you can pay your bills. I wish comfort. And again, what Paul says, we're not going to learn so much when we are walking the fine line, the straight line, the plane. Even going to the mountain, climbing that hill takes work. And yet we have, for the brethren, we have, I hope you do well. I pray you do well. I want you to do well. Wishing. And when we say, I hope you do well. I want you to get that job. We are using the word wish. And it's not a sin. But don't forget to say, pray to God about the prosperity. Pray to God about their soul. So I'm going to say to the person, I don't know who it was. Wishing is not a sin. Luke, Paul, and John, New Testament, church age, wish. I wouldn't wish upon a star. I would pray to the one that made and created the stars. Children around December always wish for gifts and presents from a non-God called Santa Claus. And yet our hope, our blessed hope, is the coming of our great Savior and our great God, Jesus Christ. Hope also fits in the word of wish. But you'll find more hope in the Bible than you will find wish. So is it a sin to wish? No. It's not. Also, let's pray while we wish. Let's seek God while we want. 